Hello everyone! Thank you for helping us reach 4,000 watch time hours. Now here's a special video just for you. What's up model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today I'm going to open up and show to you what's inside the Lotus Super 7 Series 2 by Tamiya Japan. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I will show you another cool model car unboxing. So let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we go all the way back to 1961, where we get to take a look at the very awesome Lotus Super 7 Series 2. Now the Series 2 came out in 1961 and lasted until 1968. Here we have a 124 scale version of this model made by Taimiya. If we look at this side of the box, we get some really cool illustrated views of Colin Chapman's famous little sports car. And this side of the box shows both an underside view as well as the top view of the little car. Now let's take off the lid and see what's inside this amazing little sports car's box. And right here we are looking at our instruction sheet, which is very amazing. Then we've got our squishy rubber tires which are always awesome. The glass and a little bit of photo etching inside there. And then we have all our plastic components and the decal sheet inside and a few items to join the Timia Club of Canada and other things. As we look at the instructions, of course, we've got a sports car version that you could build of this kit as well as the regular street version. And down below is the entire history of the Lotus 7. The one thing that makes the Lotus Super 7 Series 2 different from the original Lotus Super 7 Series 1 are these sweeping front fenders. Now as we see here, Tamiya's got this really nice single piece body and in step one we are putting on the front suspension up underneath. Step two shows more of the assembly with our stabilizer bar and this bar being dropped in as well as the shock absorbers and this is how they all link up around the suspension. Image number two shows our assembly of the front brakes which includes our brake drums and calipers going on to our posable kingpin up front and here we have our tie rod. This is a rack and pinion style. There's the other components and all this will snake in and click into place down below. Step four shows our rear differential being assembled. This does have the springs molded on. There's the front of the drive shaft and the front of the differential, as well as these two little stabilizer bars out back. All of this hooks into the rear body, and then the stabilizers go into these little holes down here. Step five shows our engine going together. Here you get a nice two-piece engine and transmission with the oil pan being glued underneath and a distributor up top. There's our pulleys and belt and alternator being glued on, as well as these great aluminum exhaust dumps. This is all how it sets at the side, so they're saying to make sure that your carburetors are parallel with the bottom of the exhaust. There's our valve cover going on top, as well as the dual uh, two-barrel carburetors, I do believe, and then all the little trumpets that go onto the end there. Step six shows our engine being assembled onto the chassis and fenders, then we have our center console, our little gear stick lever, and the rear of the seat. Step six carries on with this nice cage that goes underneath to protect the rear axle and these side exhaust pipes which glue onto the body. Step seven is illustrated down the center of the page just before step six, which is kind of unusual. Here it says, if you make the Clubman racer, open up the holes here as shown. As we continue with step seven, we have the meter panel, otherwise known as the dashboard, and there's all our little gauges being installed. These are all decals. Here it says to make sure that you have this at the right angle and that the pin is on the outside. And then here is the brakes from inside the car. You've got your pedals and your little master cylinders up top, all hooking on to this pivot. Step seven continues on the page with this rod going inside here for our steering column. And then on this side, we can see the final assembly with our pedals being dropped into place, the steering wheel and how to paint the battery and everything that goes under behind this panel. 
Panel 8 includes this really nice paint chart that shows the body colors down the side, the seat colors in the middle that go with the body colors, and our interior color as well. Here we have the top of the instrument panel in our battery being dropped into place, and the bottom of the bucket seats up front. Panel 9 shows our engine room, which includes our radiator, our radiator cap, and the upper radiator hose with thermostat. Panel 10 shows our grill going into the nose cone. Our nose cone has a nice decal that goes on here, and the concept of this is to take your pliers and bend the edge down at 90 degrees, put the grill into the nose, and then with your pliers again, spread out these ends with some crazy glue and attach them to the sides of the inside of the nose. Panel 11 is showing how to attach your headlights. So here we have the headlight bracket, the back of the headlight, the chrome ring, and our clear glass. And make sure that this pattern is correct on both sides. So there's right hand and left hand. Here's the rear spare tire. This is the one with the lug nuts showing and it pops into the rubber tire in the back. Then you glue that on, of course. Here's our other wheels and tires all being put into place. These have little retaining pins, so make sure you glue them to the brake and not through the actual axle. Otherwise, these wheels will never turn. And there's our headlights being dropped down, as well as this nose catch and our nose. This illustration shows the rear three quarters of the car with our taillights being glued into place and then our covers going on the wheels. This would be for the street version of the kit. There's our license plate being glued on and our hood dropping into position. Step 13 shows our final assembly and I've got it marked here, Car from the Prisoner. That was a 60s TV series. Here we have our hubcaps being put into place. There's our windscreen with the brackets, our back tonneau cover, the rear view mirror and our windshield wipers. And then for the sports race car, you can add in this nice little roll bar, make a couple of notches into the back panel. There's the two little separate windscreens as well as a different type of mirror in here. And that is our rally style. Our final panel shows the decal location for both our regular Street Lotus and our Clubman Racer down below. The Lotus Super 7 Series 2 by Tamiya is only molded in two colors. You get a choice of white or black plastic. As you can see, we have the body in place. There's the nose. There's our instrument panel. The bottom of the seats, the back of the seat. There's our two engine halves, the hood, the cowl and the battery. There's our brackets for the windscreen, our carburetors, and there's our wheels and steering wheel, as well as suspension components and the valve cover. Very nice. If we bring this up into the camera, you can see all the great detail there on these kits. Underneath are some mold marks, but really not too much to be worried about. This will still make a wonderful shelf model. There's the Tamaya logo with A stamped in there the center console, there's that valve cover. Look at the nice detailing on the, on the wheels and the suspension components. There's our nice little engine block and then the hood and the cowl with the battery. Very nice work indeed. Really well done on both sides of the equation. Again, another winning model kit by Tamiya. Here we have our second parts tree, which consists mostly of the suspension components, but there is the rear tonneau cover included and our headlamps. Again, very nice detail work on here. If you look at the radiator, you can see the little grill in there. Excellent stuff. There's the bottom of our oil pan with some braces in it, our disc brake rotors, our rear axle. Very beautiful work. The little cage that goes and covers the rear axle in the back. Beautiful, beautiful engineering once again. Here we have two additional parts trees as well as our photo etch grill. The first being our clear plastic parts, which includes our windscreens for both the racer and the regular street Lotus, and then our tail lamps and our headlights. Here are the chrome components, which consist of our hubcaps and the backs of our headlights and our very awesome looking Lotus photo etched grill. I'll just bring up the photo etch grill into the camera and you can see how wonderful that is. 
Very excellent stuff. Photo etch is always nice, real easy to work with, and you need crazy glue to stick it in. Here we have our tires, which are included in the kit. These are a nice squishy material. Unfortunately, there are no names up the sidewalls. You would think there'd be like Dunlop or something to that effect. There's a nice little tread on there, but basically that's what you get for your tires. Here we have our decal sheet with almost all the numbers, except missing is the number six, which of course you could always turn into a nine. Pretty odd that Tamiya chose this route. Anyway, the font is really nice, very vintage looking. There are a couple little stripes along here, and we also have these white circles where you can drop in the number. One for the hood and two for the doors on either side. There's our instruments and our British license plates for the street version. Have you built this model car in the past? If so, let us know how you liked it in the comment section down below. I hope you found this video very helpful for your next model car purchase. And now, as promised, this video right here will show you another great model car unboxing. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.